Hey, I'm Lottie Mack and this is Modes of Making, the podcast that focuses on the process before the piece. Each episode we'll be talking with someone new about how they do what they do. This week we've got someone super interested in Mr. Noah Chulu Chin, a PhD student and also the co-founder of the creative platform Sun Weekly. I feel like he literally embodies the term multifaceted and I just really hope you love this episode. I had to intervene here and redo the intro a little bit because something went wrong, but let's get into it. Hope you enjoy. Okay, hello, welcome. Noah is the co-founder of Sun Weekly and also a scientist genius man, <laughs> a nuclear fusion scientist man, yes. but also a co-founder of Sun Weekly. I was going to go into some what Sun Weekly is, but I feel like you'll probably give it the best description. Uh-huh. What is Sun Weekly? Uh, that's a good question. Something that I actually struggle to answer myself. I'd say Sun Weekly is a platform and a collective of individuals that look to work with creatives, academics, mm-hmm. and everything in between to amplify young voices. We do exhibitions, we do events, we start to do documentaries, and it's kind of it's whatever you want it to be, basically. Yeah. yeah. I feel like such a multi-platform, you literally mm. do everything. You write articles, that's something you didn't mention. I feel like articles oh, yeah. is quite something, quite a big body of what you guys do. You carry out research projects as well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a little bit of a science yeah, yeah, yeah. STEM science moment thing. at the moment. Interviews, yeah, just kind of just generally offer a platform for creatives to thrive, but also academics alike, bringing those two worlds together. Thank you so much for coming today. I just thought I'd bring you on because, yeah, like I say, you have so many multiple interests in you and I've worked with you before. Mm-hmm. We worked with each other for the permanent temporary exhibition for London Design Week. Yes, sir. I worked under Sun Weekly, kind of, part of the team. With. The team, with Next Sun Weekly. Next to Sun Weekly, not under. I was come floating on, around on. in the in the remit of life. That exhibition was mad. Noah brought me in on that as like a producer and co-curator and it was a really beautiful weekend and that's how I met Noah and saw how amazing he works and deals well under pressure and under extreme stress extreme <laughs> stress but you also you just do so many things at once and I think that's why you interest me so much because you're so connected creatively but then also this mad academic simultaneously mm. and there's not many people that I have met ever in my life that do that and I feel like that's why you're so interesting and I wanted to bring thank you, you. So yeah, you are the co-founder. Who founded it with you, Some Weekly? So um, originally it was me, uh, my friend Joel, and my friend James. Joel kind of works for a magazine called Trippin. So it's mm-hmm, like a kind of yeah. like, you know, Gen Z, millennial travel magazine. Love. Really cool shit. Yeah, I've heard um, about that. And James does lots of graphic design and stuff like that. So it kind of was like a good kind of combination of people to come together so I kind of like had the idea of wanting to start a platform a collective I then kind of sat on it for like a year and then kind of got James involved got Joel involved and yeah that was a couple years ago so you said you you know you have friends that have like these different creative remits and Mm. you thought let's bring this all together was that like the main drive or was there like you know a bigger drive behind starting I think it was like a multitude of things originally I wanted it to be a lot more article heavy a lot more article focused um Mm -hmm. I didn't really have a like a reason behind it I'd say I just kind of had this like you know I want to be able to like express myself and I know I'm going down this route where that kind of part of me is going to be shut off so I wanted to kind of open up that side of me and it essentially was like a hobby that kind of then mutated into something a bit bigger. Yeah, that's so interesting. So you're kind of thinking about, it seems like it kind of stemmed from you thinking about the long term and thinking about how you can fulfill those like creative things in you. Because I guess long term, you're going to be science genius, man. But, who knows? Who knows? But we'll yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, Multifaceted, yeah. babe. We'll see. It kind of feels like, yeah, you were just thinking about the future and thinking about how you could incorporate all these different levels of yourself yeah. with friends. So that's really interesting. I love that. So this is obviously modes of making. We're not trying to focus on like some weekly is, wow, you have made it here. This is the end. Mm -hmm. You know, looking back on your life, we're looking about where you're at right now and how you make and things like that. So I was kind of thinking, what's your kind of routine or where do you place yourself within some weekly right now because i know there's so many aspects of it and there's a lot of people that are in it like nj who we know like mm. runs the workshops you've got quite a few writers and there's different people that take different you know holdings on the documentaries that you put out mm-hmm. what, what would you say your main focus is right now within some weekly some of my like kind of like proudest moments have been with some weekly is when i've like not done anything 
And, you know, I'm just in the back of the room and NJ's doing a workshop and there's like 30 people there and I'm just kind of chilling. And it's like, wow, like, although it helps organise this, it's kind of now become something that I don't really necessarily need to be a part of all the whole time. Yeah. But I guess for me, I'm trying to now take it to the next level and kind of upgrade it and make it a bit more serious and kind of hope it, hopefully turn it into somewhere where we can have like a a money-making aspect of it where we can use for budgets for events and stuff like that so I think that's kind of what I'm kind of aiming at now you know like there's all you know you kind of need to do the the whole content and keep the Instagram ready and I think that's the thing I struggle with so I mainly I've been kind of looking to like how how we can upgrade and update and kind of you know kind of take it to the next level basically yeah so would you say so you're saying obviously nobody gets paid at this point if Mm. there's a lot of people that we know that don't get paid for a lot Mm. that we do and it's much more like passion driven and thinking longevity with it like we're putting all this time and this energy now so that in the future something that we're passionate about can then bring us bread yeah basically (laughs) so is so money important or not important in this process I've, I've, I've we've been doing it for two years yeah and two um, years i don't know why years. i thought this i thought she was old no 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 it's two years. wow you have they years. have done a lot in in two years like <laughs> that is mad okay yeah two years and you know we've done all these events and stuff on like a, nothing like you know no budget no you know it's kind of any kind of expense is primarily being for my own pocket and it, like that gets to a point where it's like okay i've put in the work and now i want to grow it but i can't just spend my own you know i'm i'm a, I'm yeah. a student you know i'm not mm-hmm. earning that enough to kind of bankroll it forever and someone who's kind of like a mentor to me has, you know it's basically said okay you're doing this thing it's cool but how are you going to make it actually become a sustainable thing where you can have a budget so you can pay for different you know you can pay for a studio you can pay for this so it's not really like to make myself money but it's for like longevity of some weekly because I want to be able to pay people. I want to be able to like mm-hmm. say to James, our graphic, you know, the graphics like, okay, we need the graphics. Here's, you know, 200 pounds, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it's not necessarily about making money, but it's just to make us more like sustainable yeah. and less of like a hobby and more of like an actual kind of realistic thing. Yeah, it's a business and you want to be able to support your friends and pay yeah. them what they deserve yeah, to exactly. be paid naturally. Yeah. What I love most about it and like, I don't know, going back to how you're like the creative and the academic mm. And like your approach to making and your approach to working. So when you're going in and you're like, okay, here's my day for some weekly. Like, how do you separate those parts of your life, basically? The academic Noah Mm -hmm. and the creative some weekly Noah. Uh, Or do you separate them? I, you know, I separate them in terms of like hour to hour. But, you know, in a regular day, I'll be doing both. I'll I'll try to be like flipping between the two. With my research, I'm working from home most of the time. So I can, that allows me to just kind of, you know, get on a call for some weekly, then do, you know, an hour of, you know, data analysis, then an hour of, you know, interviews and stuff like that. So I like to kind of bounce in between. Yeah. But, you know, it depends. Like, obviously, for example, like the event we did, the London Design Festival one, that took like a whole like month. And that was kind of something I, ha- I had to just stop the PhD work, um, which was quite, you know, and it suffered. And like my supervisor was like, what the fuck are you doing? Because I couldn't tell them, right? I couldn't say oh, like, okay. oh, yeah, I'm doing the exhibition for London Design Festival. They're like, well, that's not your job. That's not what we're paying you to do. Yeah. Um, so that's when I kind of struggle when it's like these events and these kind of like large scale things where like, you know, you can't just split the time. Like you have to really focus on that. Yeah. And yeah. That's so interesting that like going back to what you were saying about how you like dive in and out of each thing each mm. day. The only thing I can compare this kind of like thing to is when I was at uni as well. And like I studied like history of art and fine arts. So like Mm. some kind of academic, kind of like practice based. And I had to separate whole days. Mm -hmm. I have to change my whole mindset from like being academic a lot and thinking and analysis and things like that to freely making. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. I have to completely like, to me, it feels like two separate parts of my brain. But Mm -hmm. I feel like from what you're saying is they kind of benefit each other most of the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when it's not like a big, massive like hundreds of people involved in the London Divine Festival. I wouldn't say they necessarily yeah. like complement each other, okay. but it complements my kind of like my like mental well being. Like it makes mm. me, you know, I kind of because the end of the day, like with the with the research, I, that's a it's a you know like a lot of people work on the weekends and like working every single day in the evenings and stuff like that. So I can't really be like, okay, I'm going to spend the whole day doing yeah. some weekly shit because then the stuff will suffer but because of the type of research I do there are periods of like 
there are lulls so where i can be like okay i've got a spare hour let me just do this now yeah. um but yeah, I always wish I had more time. You know? Yeah, well, you, that's what I was, gonna, I was literally yeah. about to touch on. Like, you're doing a lot. How, like, how do you manage your time? Or like someone that's listening or something like that, that has these multiple interests like mm. you, what kind of advice would you give them about, like, managing time or managing these kind of things? Not I saying you're the master of it, no, but, you know, yeah. from your heart, like, what would it be? I would say, I don't know. In terms of, like, time management, I'm not doing anything, like, special, I guess. I, like... You must be. <laughs> oh, I'm just doing it, you know. I think, I uh, I don't know. It's it's. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find a way. Of not sounding like up my own ass. No, nah, just like, do it, man. You are a very talented, amazing man. So okay. beat up your ass for a second. Like this podcast <laughs> is all about you and you sharing your shit. So okay. Go on. Well, like the PhD is hard and it's a lot of work, but it's like. It's not as hard as one may think <laughs> a phd is, in nuclear fusion isn't that hard yeah it, no it, it's like it's hard in different ways it's hard on like <clears throat> on like your mental well-being it's hard on mm. like your kind of ego and your you know like the types of people you're speaking to but i'm not looking to become an academic for the rest of my life so i know that i just need to i know what i need to do to kind of mm-hmm. get this phd and get this thing and i'm not fully because i find a lot of my peers in that and a lot of like physics people they yeah. really like dive in and it becomes their life and it yeah. becomes like they live and breathe it you know they go home and they watch a lecture and then they you know they'll be like constantly they'll know everything that's going on in like the, f- the fusion world and stuff whereas yeah. i feel like i have almost purposely separated myself from that i'm like right i have another life that i want to live apart from that so that kind of allows me to you know i'm not coasting but i'm kind of coasting at the moment mm, like coasting a phd yeah well no nah, but like yeah. it's it, you know there's the first year and the second year and then third yeah. year that's when like shit gets and real and right now you're in third i'm right? in second year okay, I'm in second year. okay so okay. basically when it comes to actually having to sit down and write the thing that's when like Shit's i'm gonna, gonna get be real. yeah yeah but right now i'm in the position where i can separate my time mm-hmm. reasonably I See, hope my again that's a, that seems like another thing i picked up from you again you're kind of thinking long term with it yeah, you know I mean, you're thinking like, okay, next year is going to be heavy. So this year I can allow myself to in- indulge a little bit more into some weekly and stuff. Yeah. So that seems like something I'm picking up from what you're saying, that you are kind of, you do think from what you're saying, just based off that, Yeah, it seems that you do think long term and how that can benefit you short term, which is like such yeah. a great way to be. I think with like, especially with the physics stuff, like it's always, it's always, it has to be long term thinking because, mm. you know, I want, I've, First side, I wanted to do a PhD when I was sixteen. So like, mad. Okay. And to 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 get to to do this PhD, it's like quite it's quite a competitive one. There's not a lot of fusion. Kind and of where do you do it? Sorry again, just to give um, a bit more detail for people. So it's kind of a mix of things, but the like my primary place to do it is um it's in an institute in Oxford, which is basically um the National Fusion Centre, basically. Okay, yeah, yeah. sounds mad. Okay, <laughs> um, so like. I guess you said you decided that you were going to do that at 16. Yeah, 16, 17. 16, yeah, 17. Yeah. Why, why did you decide to do a PhD? Because in my brain, I'm like, mm. I, ca- I couldn't even think about doing something like that at this point. So like, what made you um, do that? Or why do you do it still? So I did, I, I did physics for A-level because I did well, of it, well at GCSE. And it was like, all right, I might as well. This is my, you know, I don't know what else to do. So I'm just going to do this one. Your bag. And then actually a girl in my class called Rose, who's a fucking genius, she she gave me a book, yeah. And this book, I read it and I was like, what the fuck? It like blew my mind. Sorry, I'm swearing a lot. Like, no, okay. you can swear. I was like, what the fuck? It blew my it absolutely blew my mind. And uh, from then I was like, wow, this is actually really interesting. This kind of questions how I see everything, how I see reality, how I see the world around me, like everything. Oh. And yeah, from then I got got into it and then I kind of it's like, oh, because I didn't do maths and you need, you have to oh, do maths. Okay. So then I kind of dropped music because I was doing music. Because the whole point was, Because oh, you yeah. play saxophone. saxophone. Yeah. Well, I was well. I was trying to go to like a music conservatory. You know, I wanted to go to like a... See what know, I mean with music. this multifaceted <laughs> babe? Like, it's mad. But I kind of thought to myself, okay, I can play the saxophone at home, but you can't do physics at home by yourself. True, or okay. like, some people do, but that's, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... So yeah, I was kind of getting into more into it, and then we did a trip. Like the physics class did a trip to something called the Large Hadron Collider, mm-hmm. which is like a huge like science experiment, like really well known science experiment in Switzerland. And um, went there, and I was like, "Yeah, it's cool. Like, I'm not like 
it's physics doesn't it's interesting but like it's not that interesting to me and we also went to like a a fusion experiment just like on the day off yeah and um and i was like yeah yeah this is my shit like i really like this and then from there i kind of was like okay this is what i want to do at least for like the next like eight years and you do have to kind of acquire the you know you have to do these internships and you have to you know you have to get the experience so like Mm -hmm. it has to be a you know you know you're going to work for it yeah yeah you need, so you need to know you're going for it to make sure that you have all the ingredients yeah, to get you exactly, there, basically. Exactly. So it luckily, it was lucky that you thought of that. It you knew that it was your thing from that young. No, because I guess if you were like nineteen, twenty, and you were like actually, then you wouldn't have, I guess, had the most ingredients that would benefit you most to get into where you are now. No, hundred percent. I've always okay. felt like I was I was really lucky to like know what I wanted to do. Yeah, it's a big like, blessing. It makes it easy. It makes mm-hmm. life easy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love that. If you were to break down a process of a project for some weekly from you've had this idea Mm -hmm. to that idea being this finished thing that is now out for the world to experience, Mm -hmm. what, how would you break down what that process would be? Uh, First step, have a long shower. Think Mm -hmm. about it in the shower. I feel like that's where a lot of it comes from. Then forget about it and have another shower. Think about it some more. That kind of happens for like a week or so. (laughs) Then I don't know. I feel like for me, it's something that I'm new to. So I might not necessarily have like a tried and tested formula, but it usually, from what I've what I've been trying to do now is think of the idea, write the idea down, do a little bit of wider reading on the idea, kind of see how realistic it is, then write like a brief or a treatment. So like a little kind of PDF, some slides on something, you know, some pictures, some inspiration. This is what I've like copied other people mm-hmm. who I've worked with. Yep who do it and I'm like okay that seems like what people in the creative industry do so I'm going to copy that mm-hmm. um so right yeah right treatment you know think of a budget think of a kind of vibe and style and then just start talking to people start telling people about it because if the idea is good it would gas people up and they're like yeah I want to do it I want to do it and then yeah get a team together make a little group chat and then yeah just do it I guess yeah mm-hmm. happens, make yeah. it happen yeah but I think like yeah writing the treatment always has started to help me because I feel like yeah, I don't know if it's called a brief or whatever, a deck or whatever, but I yeah, feel whatever. like it kind of helps me think, okay, it's an actual thing. It's not in my head. It's on paper. If someone sounds like they're interested, I can send it to them. I don't have to waffle, waffle about it. I can yeah. just send it to them and they can look at it and like understand what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really helped me because, for example, for the documentary, I wrote this treatment, sent it to someone I know, didn't hear anything back, and then you know, half a year later, she came back and said, oh yeah, I sent this to um, the the owner of this production company and she said she wants to fund it. So you know what I mean? So it's Mad, like, your and treatment's supposed to be kind of good then. Well, no, nah, it, it was shit. <laughs> I think she actually, she updated it a bit. I think she updated it a bit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it helps so much because then you you have like, I have like all these different projects. I've got like a treatment for them and I can just send it to people and be like, okay, you, you think that's cool? Have a look, you can get back to me. Let me know what you think, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I think that helps a lot. I guess maybe one thing I want to ask then going back is like <coughs> research I guess is something that I feel like you're obviously you do that a lot in your academic work do you carry out any research for some weekly in the creative realm or do you is that you know other people's area um I guess like I do research when like I do interviews and stuff when mm-hmm. I interview people um Things like that, but not really. I find that I quite like some weekly to be a bit of a like winging it kind of thing where I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. let's do this. Try it out, you know. Mm-hmm. I find like that some weekly research would be going to a gig. That's mm-hmm. the type of research. Going to an exhibition. That's the type of research. That it all feeds into what we do. Because we did a, the London Design Festival thing the year before as mm-hmm. well. And I'd never done an exhibition before, but I'd been to, you know, how however many exhibitions. So I was like, all right, cool. Guess I know how to do it then. The you know? and yeah, then yeah. You like on. you hang, you know, you hang the shit up. Make sure it's all on the right level. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I had a lot of help from like people who actually yeah. knew what they were doing. But like, you know, once you like, I think like I'm quite the person. Of, like, if I see someone else doing it, I'm like, yeah, okay, they can do it. Then you know, why not give it a go? Basically, perfect. Yeah, it's such a prime example of like the energy carrying you through. Mm. It's not just saying you weren't just like, oh, there's this opportunity to maybe do this thing with the Dev- design festival. Mm. But I've never curated before shit. You're like, actually, them man can do it, so I can do it as well. Mm. And I, you have the enthusiasm and stuff to do it. And mm. that's what allowed you 
to do it so well yeah and that's really inspiring and that's really really nice but uh, it's definitely also the people around me you know they're they're the kind of like yeah, you're, you have a lot yeah. of creative friends yeah 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 and they I you know. know they always jump in yeah i love that so going into i guess the people around you and the people mm. that you work with at song weekly you guys do like a lot of collaboration based things or what feels like collaborations like mm. the people like res republica which is a multi-award winning interdisciplinary magazine about politics law and art and you've also like kind of collaborated with the photographer vicky grout mm. for the hormonal conditioning con- series at some weekly as well as the digital publication the lipstick politico mm-hmm. which they they talk all things pop art current affairs gender and culture from south asia so they're just like to name a th- few collaborations that you man do at some weekly mm-hmm. So I guess what my question would be, what is your approach to collaboration and how would you say to approach collaboration as well? I kind of, you know what, I find it quite hard mm. sometimes because, you know, you can get to this point where there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of voices in the room, you know, there's a lot of kind of like rightful people think, you know, they're, they, you know, they're deserving of, and they are deserving of like, you know, to be heard. So I think it's one of the ones where you, you have to, com- you have to compromise, right? You know, some, there's been some times where you're, you know, someone says something you're like, I think that's absolute bullshit. Like, I do not agree with that at all. But at the same time, you do have to kind of swallow your pride a bit and kind of realize that okay, it's your baby, but you know, you have to share it and kind of get on with it. I, I find like I much prefer collaborating with people who like I kind of know on a personal level. I find that way easier and kind of way easier to work with, you know, like doing the stuff with like 948 Collective. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Who hopefully we'll have on the next one. Oh, nice. Sometime soon. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Doing stuff with them where I've known them, I've met them personally, I get them, like, I, 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 like I'm passionate about what they're doing as well. I find that then it's easy and it's easy yeah. reason. Speaking the same language, yeah, essentially, exactly. like you know each other's language, not only just in words, but in tone. You'll know yeah. when maybe someone isn't as keen about something without having to say it and it be this whole formal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like the formalities, I guess, at times. Yeah, can yeah. And make things a little bit, not necessarily difficult, but I think you have to be more calculated in your approach, basically. Yes, um, I, th- I think, you know, when you're just doing it over Zoom calls and video calls, that can be quite hard as well because then you don't really have that. I feel like I need to meet someone and like, you know, yeah. look in their eyes and speak I'm to them in person. I'm the exact yeah. same. I'm all yeah. about in person. Yeah. Anything. I think that helps a lot. You know, or maybe, or maybe, you know, maybe go for a drink first or kind of do that. You know, but I, f- I think I also find it hard because, you know, in my kind of day-to-day life, in my day-to-day like, job, mm-hmm. I, you don't redo really that kind of thing. So it's like... For me, I'm just learning, you know, I'm just starting out. So I feel like yeah. I've still got a lot more to learn and kind of improve on in terms of collaboration. <laughs> okay, so we've talked things like your approach to making your approach to collaboration and stuff like that. Yeah. Now I kind of want to touch on any lessons that you think you might have learned along the way. Like what's something that maybe hasn't gone perfect? Maybe you don't need to be too specific. <laughs> you mm. don't have to. But like what's something that hasn't gone exactly as planned? And like what did you kind of learn from that basically? Um, if you do an exhibition, get the artist to sign a contract. <laughs> that's a big yeah. one. That's a big one. Yeah, um, that's, to be fair, I curate and I've never done that. So it, it helps. It helps. Mm-hmm. Trust me, it helps. Um, not in a bad way. It's just like you know. Then you're like, you know, you know what's up. I feel like it, it kind of comes back into the collaborating thing. The things I've kind of learned is I like know who you're collaborating with, and kind of make sure that you're on the same page before you start out, so you don't have to kind of go back on it and kind of reassess it and think you know a few months down the line like oh this is not actually what I thought it would be and not kind of Mm. how I thought it would go um I think that's kind of the main thing I've learned I guess like be clear about your intentions from the start of a collaboration rather than trying to figure out what they might be during the collaboration exactly because then I guess there's two people's intentions coming to make which will probably be a whole new intention by the end of it if there's two people that's really interesting. I love that. Someone is starting something like some weekly, like a creative platform. What is one piece of advice that you think, you know, like you're speaking to, you know, a 12 year old kid. He's like, oh, like I've got all these interests. I want to bring all these people together. What would what you have that sit down conversation with him? What do you think is one main thing that you would say? Um, you can't really hold yourself back by your lack of skills or lack of talent in some things, I think. I feel like the reason why I'm kind of here talking to you now is because I did not kind of 
think to myself, oh, I don't know how to do this, so I'm not going to do it, you know. So I think it's, you just have to like, you know, just do it. Just uh, do it, man. <laughs> no, it's true. Realise your dreams. Yes. Uh, no, yeah, I think, you know, sorry, it's, it sounds like kind of stupid and motivational. but No, it doesn't. Like, I yeah. mean, like this podcast, it's, you know, I want people to wake up in the morning, they're like on their way to work or something or the studio and they like need a little bit of motivation. Yeah, yeah. You man can do it. Everyone can do it. You know? I think, yeah, it's hard, you know, it's tough because like people have like, you know, people have, you have to have jobs, you have to make money. But I think there is always, you know, especially at people are, age, you do have, you know, like it's kind of harsh to say that. You do have like you're gonna have to like spend some evenings doing it. You're gonna have to get up early in the morning to do it. You're gonna have mm. to do some weekends doing it. Um, and I think you know, you do have to kind of sacrifice a bit of your leisure time to kind of do these things. Um, but you kind of have to see it as okay. Like for me, some weekly is almost my leisure time. That is kind of me doing doing this stuff. Is kind of what I like doing in my spare time. So I feel like. That. that's the kind of thing you have to sacrifice if you want to do everything and also you know make money make it you know you have to like everyone has to work but um i don't know that's not, that sounds a bit close to that molly may thing like everyone's got the same 24 everyone's hours, got the same 24 hours. No, you need to get up off your ass I mean. and work that's not what i mean but no I mean, it makes yeah. sense just like i guess it's kind of about finding the leisure in mm-hmm. your passion basically mm-hmm. i guess is like what you're saying yeah, like exactly this is like our last little section of uh-oh. our conversation today Uh oh. there's no uh oh it's kind of <laughs> basically what we've already spoken about really is anything coming up with you personally or some weekly or anything that you want people to know that's coming up maybe something that's very close to me is that we're, we're producing a documentary work in title is called black in stem so it's about kind of different young black people working in sciences and like their experiences and like you know what they've kind of the obstacles they've had to been through but also celebrating their kind of diversity and kind of showing that being a scientist isn't necessarily you're not like a one-dimensional lab coat old white man with a blackboard you know Mm -hmm. and you can you can write music you can be an artist and still kind of pursue those things so we've got a bit of funding for that which is cool and that should be out hopefully you know next autumn or in the s- summer we're also redesigning our website uh yeah because i was trying to get onto that and i'm like yeah you can't get onto that shit that's also because of some copyright thing that's going on but you know we Another move lesson learned, we I move guess. yeah yep. yeah but like yeah yeah lesson learned. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> don't snatch pictures off the internet when you think no one's gonna see them because the bots the bots will see them the bots will get you um and through that, what I'm kind of trying to work on is creating like a, a marketplace for young artists and creatives to sell their work on, but a heavily created kind of like a kind of like like a South London Etsy, which uh, is like heavily just South curated. London again. Okay, cool. I'm saying no, South London because it's, it's got the like tagline, but you know, North people can come if I want. Okay, it. wait. What do you um, mean tagline? Wait, is it going to be wait? Is some <clears> weekly stand for South something? No. No, 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 no. I'm buying tagline like that's like a way of explaining it. It's like okay, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. you Um, that's highly curated. We kind of do profiles on the artists and creatives that we then have on the marketplace, and have like a very like see through kind of structure of how it works and stuff. So no one feels like we're kind of taking advantage. And I kind of want to do it to help artists monetize their work. Because I feel that a lot of artists create amazing work, but then, you know, one one oil painting costs two grand and none of their peers can buy it. And so I feel like, you know, try and make a way how they can kind of get this passive income. So, yeah, that hopefully be out soon. And we're also producing a like a live music session series. Wow. Okay. And that hopefully should be again out like with the marketplace, with the website, re- website rebrand. We're going to try and like do a big push. Yeah, so oh, that, that's a lot of things all at once. Very exciting. Yeah, I'm also trying to write a paper. That'd be fun. Yes, look yeah, at yeah, you yeah. go. See, <laughs> always a million things with no you. Thank you so much for coming. I guess like Pleasure. one final thing is, someone's listening to this. Yeah, they're going to mm-hmm. stop listening to this podcast. They're going to put it down, mm-hmm. and they were going to go and like look at something or read something or watch something mm-hmm. or something. What what's what's a recommendation for the audience? Okay, so there's a there's a famous experiment. They um they got a clock, like a really precise clock, and they left one, you know, on the ground and they left they took another on a plane and flew it around the world. And uh, when the plane like, you know, landed and they compared the clocks, they told different times. 
And um, yeah, it's a cool thing to research. General Wait, relativity. So Crazy general shit. General relativity. General relativity. Have I'm going to look into that. I'm going to be like, I really want to ask you as soon as we stop recording right now, I'm going to be like. Have a look at that. And also look at fusion, you know. Big up fusion. Big up all the fusion people. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Of course. Shout out fusion. That. Shout out fusion. Thank yeah, you, fusion. Thank you, fusion. Thank you, fusion. <laughs> okay. And thank you, Noah. Thank you so much for coming. This has been like really educational and really nice to hear. I've loved hearing about your journey and I can't wait to see you know what's next and see all these things that you have coming up as well we'll be excited thank you love that thank you it's a wrap 